Lesotho. The only sovereign enclave outside of Italy is a high-altitude landlocked kingdom with an 1,100-kilometer border shared with South Africa. Approximately 2 million Basutu citizens enjoy the freedom of just over 30,000 square kilometers of rugged mountain terrain in the Maluti Range. The rural population live in relative peace and tranquility among the mountains and the valleys of this stunning land. Towards the end of every year since 1967, that peace and tranquility is interrupted for a handful of days when Lesotho becomes the epicenter of hard enduro, when it plays host to the Roof of Africa Rally, the oldest hard enduro race in the world. In 2023, the Avani Lesotho Casino Hotel in the capital Masiru was race central as the top riders in South Africa and a number of international riders joined hundreds of keen amateurs to test themselves against the course, each other and the notorious weather. I'm 47 years old and probably classified as a midlife crisis, but just watching, watching online and watching my friends ride, um, just stoked to be here. It's been a, a two years in the making, training really hard and, and daydreaming. So I'm, I'm just stoked to be here at last, yeah, epic. Excitement was ramping up as riders from all over the world registered. Um, so I come from Kenya and back home everyone talks about roof. So I thought why not try it, I'm the only Kenyan here. Um, and I'll be the fifth Kenyan to ever compete in roof the last five years, so I'm just quite excited to try it out and see what it's all about. This is my first roof of Africa. I've missed it the past couple of years, so yeah, I'm excited to get going. It's kind of a challenge, such a historic event, it's almost an honor just to get to take part. The roof is steeped in history. Crimped up by road engineer Bob Phillips, the early years from 1967 were all about cars. Bikes joined the fray in 1969, and since the turn of the millennium, it's bikes only, with the terrain and weather earning it the moniker of the mother of hard enduro. Day one saw the traditional round-the-houses pipe opener. A chance for riders to give their machines a final shakedown on the smooth tar roads around the suburbs of Masiru. Last minute preparations were completed. Dignitaries arrived. The vibe was electric. There was nowhere to hide now. So as always, to kick things off for the Roof of Africa, we're here on the tarmac. It's round the houses on the streets of Masiru. All the guys are lined up, ready to rock and roll. We're gonna open up our racing accounts with our adventure riders. Then we go into gold, silver, bronze, and iron. Then we head to the Masuru Mall and go out onto the time trial. This is where it all begins for the Roof of Africa in 2023. 38 riders lined up in the elite gold class. Number two, Travis Teasdale with the defending champion and seven-time winner Wade Young on his right with the number one board. Those looking to challenge that fan included Matt Green, Brett Swanepoel and 18-year-old sensation James Moore. This was a chance for the locals to get an earful of raw sound. To witness the speed and skill of the riders in all the classes. Gold class were numbered 1 to 38. The 81 silver riders were numbered from 100. The biggest class, bronze, were numbered from 200 to 441. There were 232 entrants. Iron from 501 to 559, with 51 entrants. The round the houses was three laps of a three kilometer circuit. Now, pretty much, uh, yeah, just for the show and that, but really fun racing. And normally, the guy with the fastest bike does well, so uh, yeah, we're gonna give it a good shot. And then, after that, we have a uh, time trial, yeah, we have two laps of 11k loop, and um, that's in the gravel up and down, and uh, some obstacles. So, yeah, the key is to push hard as we can and do as good as we can. The checkered flag out to signal the end of the round the houses. Time to burn a little rubber.
After the fun and festivities in the city, things took on a more serious tone as they headed up the mountain for the Masira Mall Mountain Mayhem Time Trial Prologue. The old hands and veterans are cool and relaxed. The newbies, not so much. This is where the clock starts ticking in earnest, when every second lost could cost a place or two, and every second gain could get you a win. Bronze racer Shabir Musa blasts away from the start. Ride is setting off at 30 second intervals. Gold's Matt Stevens took a strategic approach to the time trial. So obviously we've got two, two runs at time trial, so look, I mean, you don't want to go too slow on the first one in case there is a problem on your second one. Um, but yeah, essentially just look at the track first one, go as fast as you can, and then second one really put the hammer down and then try to get that top spot. Trademore Sherco Racing's Brett Swanepoel showed he was up for the challenge. Dabbing when needed to keep momentum over the rocks. The starting gaps are closed quickly as riders handled the terrain and the pressure of racing against the clock in different ways and executed their strategies. The goal do a different sort of downhill to the other, the other classes, so obviously it is a bit more techni technical. But uh, yeah, time trial is always going as fast as you can uh, and try obviously start the day leading uh, or as close to the front as possible. A year ago, torrential rains played havoc with the race and tactics. This time around, it was bakingly hot, dry and dusty. You know, we, we've been out riding and, and the track's actually, in my opinion, worse than the wet. Um, you know, the heat's going to come into play. And then with it being so dry, there's actually less traction, which is also going to pay um, a bigger toll on our tyres. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, we haven't had a hot roof since 2019, so let's see how it goes. That's the beauty of the mother of hard enduros. The weather often dictates how the bikes and riders perform. Number 433, none other than MotoGP superstar Brad Binder getting his first taste of the roof in the bronze class. The log drops proved a little tough here for Dwayne Turner. And the cement pipe provided spectators with spectacular action. Rian Pretorius showed the rock garden plenty of respect. Fast and Furious time trial gave all the riders a small taste of what they were in for on the two big stages to come, and some relief for those who got through without any serious issues. While the race could not be won in the time trial, it certainly could be lost, so in many ways a slightly conservative approach might well prove to be the best strategy in the long term. A clear dawn ahead of the second day's racing. After the short time trial, this was to be a real test of strength, stamina and strategy. Gold with a race between 120 and 160 kilometers. Listen, it's an early start, but obviously we all have to get as much food in as we can. I know it's going to be a long day. Hopefully I can get it over and done with as quick as possible, so keep that speed going. Time trial had a shocking first run. Um, just got caught up and yeah, it wasn't the best, but then after that uh, second run a lot better, so ended up fourth. And obviously we had the time trial, finished up second, so starting second on the road today, so looking forward to a really long day. Long day it certainly was going to be. Anything from 8 to 13 hours out in the blazing heat. The Tabu Bosuyu to Bushman's past stage is the stuff of legend. Disaster for race leader Brett Swanepoel, a mechanical problem on the start line. A frantic search for the issue as the seconds tick by for Brett. Travis Teasdale on his Husqvarna was calm and composed. The 25-year-old from KZN was third a year ago behind Young and Matti Littenbichler. Travis desperate to get the better of Young this year. Meanwhile, Swanepoel's woes continued at the start. The trademore Sherco rider's hopes of winning the stage were slipping away as he pushed his bike on. Number one on his plate, Wade Young set off. He was a few seconds off the fastest in the time trial, but this man knows exactly how to map a race-winning ride. Having seen Swanepoel in distress, he knew he had a great chance to take an early advantage. There are 
few with more skill on the rocks than Wade Young. The battle lines were drawn and soon the main contenders were within seconds of each other. Matty Greener and his KTM had made a solid start. William Wade Slater was there, as was Young and Travis Teasdale. It was slow going on the brutal slopes, made all the more tricky by the dry sand and rocks. Traction was a tough commodity to find here. As Slater found out to his cost, Young picked a high line and executed the pass with skill, and they just kept the throttle open. The special beauty of the Malutis hides a myriad of harsh challenges for these intrepid two- and four-stroke warriors. The descents are wickedly steep, and in these conditions demanding of a precise line choice. Daniel Beckham on his Sherco in the Silver Class climbs out of the river with a minimum of fuss. Stefan Rousseau made a spectacular exit. Winner of the Bronze Class last year, Tate Stroh, showing excellent technique in the Silver Class in 2023. Second in the time trial in silver, Bryce Peterson was all class on his KTM. Tyrone Bird was going strong and leading in the bronze class. A rare patch of mud caused little trouble in this edition of the roof. The clear, hot weather made for smoother trail and spectacular views. Sharon Moore riding bronze ahead of his tilt at the Dakar in January. The fast KTM rider Nathaniel de Amaral handling the rocks like a pro. It was a day of good times and hard riding. A superb all-round athlete, Andrew Houston of Glencairn Farm in Underberg, was among the silver leaders. The designated service point was nearby. Shabir Musa losing momentum on his KTM. Another graphic illustration of the intense physical effort needed to ride the roof. The amazing collective support from the friends and fans trackside as they guide and cheer the riders through the boulder-strewn climb. Another sighting of brother leader Tread KTM's Brad Binder. And Jordan J Dog Cowley, who sadly didn't finish the stage. 17 year old James Moore was well on his way to a solid top five finish on the day. Swanapool was fighting hard to regain time. And Teasdale was giving it his all. While Slater was again in Wade Young's sights. Former Super Enduro World Champion California's Cody Webb was finding out all about the unforgiving African terrain. It wasn't all plain sailing for the defending champion Young, as he had to stop on the trails to make repairs. I got a hole in my radiator. Uh, Dalton. As Wade fixed his radiator, Travis Teasdale closed in and then passed the stricken Sherco. But his chance to open a gap was lost a little later. Not one to let a mechanical issue get in his way, Young flew down the mountainside. Shabir Musa was on the ride of his life, looking good for a top five finish in bronze on day one. Grant Burton-Durham on his gas gas found a clean line through the rocky descent. 
Wade Young was the gold winner on day one. It was a really long day. Um, I didn't expect this to be so long and <clears throat> that last loop we went on, there was just an early uphill that we climbed for probably 45 minutes. So that pretty much broke me. So and the other guys were really tired when I left them. So I'm sure they're having, having to dig deep as well. I don't think the guys were pushing too hard up front. I caught them pretty quick and yeah, rode with them quite a bit. I had my radiator hose came loose, so I kept having to stop and fill up. Um, but yeah, figured that out after a couple of hours, which was pretty yeah, disappointing. But anyway, I'm happy. I'm at the finish. Thanks to my team and everyone supporting. Um, yeah, really appreciate it and well done to all the other riders. Nathaniel de Amaral was the Iron Class winner by four minutes from Jack Brotherton. Tyrone Bird flew fastest in bronze ahead of another Cape Tonian, Louis Bresler Knipe. Grant Burton Durham was a winner by over 10 minutes from Kevin DeCock. Wade Young was the class act in the gold from Matt Green and Brett Swanepoel. Another perfect morning greeted the riders at Bushman's Pass the next day. Even the very best learned the hard way at the Roof of Africa. Uh, I think today it'll be worth my time to stop at the uh, gas gas stops and grab water. I didn't know yesterday there was water there, so I just kept going and I ran without water for so long. I've never been in that physical state before, so cramped for bad. So we're doing all right today. Obviously, I think everyone's a bit a bit worn down, but I feel pretty good. Just got to tape my hands up so I can push in that regard and then uh, I think it'd be worth it to just take a little bit extra time to add water to the pack when I can. Yeah, it was a hard day yesterday. I just have to try and stay in in front of James Moore because he was pushing me the whole day yesterday and he unfortunately didn't get his time back so I think he's going to be quite motivated to do well today and uh, yeah, it's going to be a long day. Yeah, definitely body's tired. Um, it was a huge day yesterday and I expect today to be another big day so yeah, hopefully we can just keep it together, minimize any damages, mechanicals, any crashes so yeah, just hope for a smooth day and to keep strong throughout the day. Uh, today to go out, just keep it steady, um, make it to the finish line in one piece and um, yeah, I'll see see how the guys are, they're probably going to push hard to try to catch me early, so that's a right to ride with them and um, yeah, see how the day goes. Yeah, well, um, it was good yesterday, I rode well, so I think it's going to be hot, long, hopefully I can stay with the top riders and get a good result. Away went the man with a target on his back, race leader Wade Young. Another brutally tough day of riding ahead. With over 20 minutes advantage over his rivals, low risk, consistent riding was the order of the day for the seven time champion. Matty Green, who along with Young and Swanepoel competed in the FIM Hard Enduro World Championship Series in 2023, set off in hot pursuit on his KTM. It was all systems go on the final day of the 47th Roof of Africa. Young, who finished 7th on the 2023 World Championship standings, was super smooth. All poise, balance and power in the Maluti Mountains. In bronze, Shabir Musa was a man on a mission again, looking to put pressure on the riders ahead of him and claim a podium place. It was a great day to be out on your bike. Come on, Levi! Or standing trailside cheering for your rider. What a contrast to a year ago when the rivers were in spate. Now they were an oasis of natural cooling. Riders headed down mountains they rode up a day earlier. Young leading a string of gold men. Matt Green was charging hard. The fight for a podium place was on between he and Swanepoel. James Moore was showing Cody Webb a dusty set of tracks as the young Durbanite set a blistering pace. This was Moore's last race for KTM before he joins the gas gas setup. And he was putting pressure on the champion for the stage win. But Young is a master among the boulders.
Jeff Patterson was holding onto a top 10 place in the silver class. Whatever class they were in, all the riders had an absolute blast on a blazingly hot day. After consecutive years of storms, rain and mud, they were rewarded with perfect riding conditions. Yes, it was hot, but this is Africa. What do you expect? For Brad Binder and brother Darren, the roof was like no other race they've done. They spent the day riding in tandem. What a pleasure to have them here. DK Mullet showed us his chops. But this is the roof and things certainly got tougher. A lot tougher. Gary Fagy was stuck in the mud. What mud? Alfie Cox Racing's Bilon Thule climbing well. And then it was down the other side for the spectacular view of the Katsi Dam in the distance. The true spirit of the roof was evident all through the classes and all three days. Kyle Flanagan, the man, being given a hand up here. Avoiding the donkeys, Wade Young was on his way to another faultless performance. But the stage was in the hands of the young protege, James Moore. Young, Moore, Swanepoel and company all together. The lead changing all the time. In silver, Grant Burton Durham couldn't match his rivals Tate Stroh and Daniel Peckham for pace on the final day. Stroh on a Yamaha was on a flyer along with Peckham bouncing through the rocks on his Sherco. This was the reward after a second season of tree planting in Canada and strong family support for the 20-year-old Stroh from Winterton on the 118 Yamaha. Andrew Houston from Glencairn Farm endured a tough final day. Hasty the only one in the top five in silver over eight hours. Back with gold, Wade Young on the rocks. No risks, he was rock solid all stage. Matty Green looked to have second place overall sewn up, a big step up from fourth last year. American Cody Webb brought his class and fearless riding to the rocks of the roof. Green was 10th in the pro class and 2nd in the junior category of the World Championship Series in 2023. This young man is a star of the future. And surely it won't be long before he's joined on the world stage by the likes of James Moore and Tristan Tamsin, who are the fastest two gold riders in the blazing heat of Stage 2. Just 12 of 38 starters completed the toughest of the four classes as the roof of Africa once again lived up to its fabled reputation as the mother of hard enduros. 17-year-old Moore took the stage win by just under 10 minutes from Tamsin. A phenomenal ride by the young man from Hilton. I don't really know how it feels. It hasn't really settled yet. I'm not sure what I've really done yet, but it was really cool. I've learned so much on this roof. I've rode with all my heroes, really. And yeah, I can't complain. At the end of three days, it was the speed, skill and tactical nas of Wade Young that ensured an eighth overall win for the Sherco Racing Superstar. And Wade Young's eighth win by 19 minutes from Matty Green puts him one away from the legendary Alfie Cox's nine victories at the conclusion of the 47th Roof of Africa. What a rider, what a race.